So I told Jerry, I'm not getting out for anything, I said, because uh, you know, I want to see what happens. And the light come close to me, about maybe 15 feet, so I jumped out. Ghost trains are an iconic trope of spooky stories. They have something of a legendary status. It could be a train that never reached its final destination, or something tragic that happened to an individual near the railroad. In the small Canadian village of St. Louis, Saskatchewan, population 415, a century-old ghost train story has shed some spotlight on this otherwise unassuming location. The Grand Trunk Pacific Railway built a branch line to St. Louis in late 1913. A steel bridge was constructed throughout 1914 over the South Saskatchewan River to reach Prince Albert by 1915. The line came under Canadian National Railway ownership by 1919. The story begins sometime around then. A conductor, or railroad worker of some kind, was either checking the tracks or train, or he slipped off of a moving train when he was decapitated by it reversing down the track. Despite this, time kept moving on. Canadian National continued running grain trains through St. Louis until 1983, when that section of the Cudworth subdivision was abandoned and eventually torn up. The Grand Trunk Pacific Bridge remains the only indicator of a railroad through St. Louis. Since 2002, the remaining section south from a grain elevator at Hoey has been leased to Wheatland Rail. Ever since the incident, a ghost train and the ghost of the conductor are said to roam the abandoned stretch of railroad right-of-way. A white and red light, or multiple lights, have been spotted and recorded by many individuals over the course of several decades. Locals and their grandparents grew up seeing the light, and still see it to this day. How many times have I seen the light? Oh god, I don't know, ballpark figure, maybe 50, 60 times? The white light, implied to be the steam locomotive, gets brighter and dimmer until eventually disappearing and or reappearing. The red light, sometimes swaying as it accompanies the white one, is said to be the lantern of the conductor keeping an eye on his train or him looking for his lost head. Witnesses have also described it as feeling eerie or colder when the light appears. Accounts also include car engine troubles and the sound of a distant steam whistle. Out of all of this, one obvious question remains. What's the cause of these lights? One theory claims automobile headlights disappearing and appearing from hilly roads are to blame. Another theory points the finger towards light diffraction. From late 2001 into 2002, two 12th grade students from La Ronge, Saskatchewan investigated the story. They claimed to duplicate the phenomenon using car headlights and taillights on a nearby road the light beam passing through the overgrown path of the old rail line. They won gold medals in a science fair for this experiment. However, these ghostly lights were reportedly spotted before cars were common around St. Louis. Plus, nearby roadways don't see much traffic, nor do they match up with the railroad's former path in a way that could plausibly explain the lights. Others have tried getting closer to the lights, but can never seem to reach them. If it's not street lights, pranksters, or cars, what is it? Much of the abandoned railroad path is now private property of farmers, so documentation can be tricky. The one thing that can be for certain is this story put St. Louis on the radar for many people. It attracted the attention of the Unsolved Mysteries TV show and the Canada Post, who made a stamp depicting the phantom train. Wheatland Rail even operates an excursion train with a Halloween event in October, referencing the ghost train. Regardless of attempted explanations, this is a story and sighting that will be passed on for generations to come. It managed to benefit St. Louis, shining a unique tourist spotlight on the village. Canadian National Railway's official records do not date back far enough to prove the incident as true or false, leaving it forever a mystery. The ghostly white and red lights still appear frequently to this day. 
It's up to you whether you want to see these lights as nothing more than a strange phenomenon or a ghost train in its headless conductor, haunting rural Saskatchewan for the rest of these eternal phantom days. Initial reports indicated it was a ghost train. The small village of St. Louis borders the South Saskatchewan River in the central part of the province. So whenever somebody new come to town or visitors, whatever, we'd always bring them to the... It was, a, it was something to do in St. Louis, and not much else to do in a small town. Although it's a small community with a population of around 450 people, it has a big claim to supernatural fame. It, it just gave us things to talk about, you know. Oh, you're from St. Louis, the ghost light, you know. Or Rich Pilon, we have an NHL player who came from here as well, you know, there's certain things you, your community is known for and ours was, it put us on the map, it made us feel proud. For Edward Lucier, the legend of the ghost train was part of growing up in St. Louis. And it would get quite bright and it would light up the tracks and stuff and then it would vanish. How many times do you think you've seen the light? How many times have I seen the light? Oh God, I don't know, ballpark figure, maybe 50, 60 times. Although the tales have taken on different versions throughout the years, the legend dates back to the 1920s. It said a Canadian National Railway conductor was out examining the train tracks one night when he was decapitated by a passing train. As the spirit of the conductor is said to live on, I got it, just a glimpse of it on camera. Locals claim to see a mysterious white light, and sometimes even a light that shines red. It was very prominent, like the light coming through the bush. It was so obvious, like what it was, it actually did look like a train. It just was weird. It was the light would come out and it would reach the bush line and then it would fade away. The railway's records don't go back far enough to confirm the gruesome event. However, when the rail line was abandoned and the tracks were removed, the village's famous light didn't stop. Today, the trees and grass where the tracks once were are starting to grow in, but the tale that dates back nearly a century continues to be passed down from generation to generation. We did that all the time as teenagers growing up and then as we got older and got married and then our kids, now our kids started to do that and they wanted to do that all the time like birthday parties and get a crew together and would take them out there and get out there, have a wiener roast and then yeah, walk down the tracks and of course it'd be people hide in the bush and scare each other and stuff but you'd always see the light coming, always. I don't think I've ever gone when I haven't seen the light. For local residents Les and Betty Rancourt, their memories of seeing the ghost train dates back to when they were in high school. They've both seen the light dozens of times ever since. It used to be quite the party place and we came here and uh, they walked me down the track and I saw this light which looked like pretty much a, a car light from a distance but the uh, interesting thing it had a little red light that kind of moved around it. And even eerie experiences accompany some memories. We came out this way to just enjoy the, the phantom light and at midnight my watch stopped and even changing the battery the next day it never worked again. The legend of the ghost light, the phantom light, it's on the other side here in the RM of PA. The site is located across the river, a few kilometers north of St. Louis. Because the land is now private property, the village has not been able to promote it as a tourist attraction or put any landmark in the area. A lot of people actually do come to St. Louis asking where are the ghost lights and can we direct them to the ghost lights. So yeah, it is, uh, it kind of get, gets the name of St. Louis out there in a kind of a fun way and in a mysterious way. Throughout the years, skeptics have tried to solve the mystery, saying the light is from headlights from a nearby road. But for local residents, they're content leaving the story as is. It's there, it's weird. We have no idea what it is. And letting the mystery live on for years to come. As far back as the 1920s, generations have marveled at a mysterious glowing light that followed the train tracks near the village of St. Louis, Saskatchewan. It is said that this is the ghost of a train that derailed. When the tracks were removed in the 1980s, it was assumed that would be the end of the ghost train. It was not.
The twin lights on the left are streetlights in the village of St. Louis. But what is the light on the right? Other lights appeared and disappeared, twinkling in the dark. It was far too late in the season for fireflies. It was November and nearly minus 15. The light seemed to move constantly to the left, always coming closer but never arriving. Occasionally, it split into pieces. Occasionally, it would disappear altogether, and then reappear dramatically, incandescent as ever. I reached in the dark and switched the camera to night vision. Though the camera was on a tripod, a slight breeze vibrated it, causing shaky images during telephoto. I found the camera had difficulty focusing on the small points of light. At times, the light flared up dramatically until it was nearly bright enough to read by. What was that mysterious point in the dark? Then the light really began to flare, lighting up the sides of the trail where trains, real trains, once ran. Optical illusion or something else entirely. I'll let the viewer decide. And all of a sudden I seen a light coming behind me. So I told Jerry, I'm not getting out for anything, I said. Because uh, you know, I want to see what happens. And the light come close to me about maybe 15 feet. So I jumped out. I jumped out the track and I let the light go by. So I got I got out the railroad track and it passed and it carried on going for about maybe a block and a half then it turned left into the bush and then it started being dim, 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 dim finally it was like a little wicked to me and that's the light I see if you saw it, it's going to come back again 
So that man you just saw was a resident of St. Louis, Saskatchewan, and he was talking about his experience witnessing a potentially paranormal phenomenon near this little village. Over the next month or so, I'm going to be posting a bunch of videos on Saskatchewan that I'm really looking forward to. And I wanted to start with the St. Louis ghost light for people that are in the Halloween spirit. It goes by a few names. It's known as the St. Louis light, the St. Louis ghost light, and the St. Louis ghost train. People have reported many different experiences when witnessing this light, but essentially there's this old abandoned rail line north of St. Louis and along this old rail bed people talk about seeing a bright light that will appear suddenly and often it will travel down the rail track toward observers. People also talk about seeing a red or orange light. Sometimes it appears on its own and at other times it appears with the white light. So the most common version of the legend is that back in the 1920s a train was stopped on these tracks and either a brakeman or an engineer got out and then unfortunately was decapitated by the train and many people say that the white light is the ghost train and the red light is produced by the lantern of the headless ghost that wanders the tracks. People often talk about an ominous scary feeling that accompanies their sighting and many others have reported vehicle trouble when they're parked at this location. This is someone in Prince Albert talking about their experience. Okay so when I was a teenager I was out in the woods for the St. Louis lights and we all went to check it out and while we were there there was a flash of light so it, usually what you see and then it's like it it lingers and it yeah. bobbles so it's kind of like to me, it looked like beyond the flash, it looked like someone walking down a track with a flashlight. So it's like they're walking towards you. But it's like you get that initial flash and you're like, oh gosh, what was that light? And then you see this sort of wobbling kind of light that just kind of looks like a flashlight off in the distance that lingers for quite a while. I don't okay. remember, it was quite a few years ago how long it lingered, but long enough to make everybody uncomfortable and ditch. Many people outside of Saskatchewan haven't even heard about this ghost light, but it was actually featured on the TV series called Unsolved Mysteries, and in 2014, Canada Post issued a stamp depicting the St. Louis ghost train as a part of one of their multiple paranormal collections. And a little bit about St. Louis itself, so this village is about 35 kilometers south of Prince Albert, and it's located on the south bank of the South Saskatchewan River. Métis settlers started coming to this area in the late 1800s, fleeing economic and social dislocation from Red River, Manitoba. St. Louis was the northernmost South Branch settlement, which is a series of Métis settlements in what is today the province of Saskatchewan. And these settlements became the center of Métis resistance during the Northwest Rebellion of 1885. St. Louis was officially incorporated as a village in 1959, and it's actually home to a large archaeological site of indigenous artifacts. Notable discoveries at the site included new species of wolf and buffalo that are approximately 25% larger than modern species. And if you're visiting St. Louis, it's hard to miss the large bison sculpture in Antiquus Bison Park. I also have to mention River Road Pizzeria. This is located on the west end of town in an old converted school building. I stopped here for lunch, the pizza was excellent, and I love that this small town pizzeria even has their own merchandise wall. And when I stopped in, another person at the pizzeria was willing to talk about their experience seeing the ghost light. When I was out there, what first appeared to me was three orange triangle lights, or three, three round lights that were in a triangle shape. And I seen that for a few seconds and then that disappeared. And then what came after was a big white light that came towards us and then just disappeared. I've stayed like it was like maybe a foot away from us and then just gone. But I've heard like other people say that it like come right through, go right through. The village of St. Louis has leaned into this local ghost light phenomenon. For years, there was a restaurant called the Phantom Light Diner. I also found another business in town called Ghost Light Towing, which helps keep this legend alive. When I first visited St. Louis, I stopped at the St. Louis Gas and Convenience Store. I was able to sit down with some friendly locals, and they even drove me out and showed me the exact location where the ghost light appears. The lights appear on an old railway bed that was once part of the Canadian National Railway. The tracks were abandoned in 1983, and they were completely removed in 1988. It's now just a grassy trail which sits on private farmland and so I'm not going to disclose the exact location but honestly it's not that hard to find if you dig around. So late last summer I visited this location at night with a couple friends from Saskatoon both of whom had seen the light multiple times in the past. We stayed out there for hours but unfortunately we did not see the light. However I returned a few weeks later on my own and this time I was able to see some sort of light almost instantly. So my camera is not the best quality and it just doesn't pick stuff up clearly in the dark and I apologize for the condition of the 
the footage. I definitely want to get a better camera down the road. But I was able to see some sort of light and it happened almost immediately. What I saw personally was an orb of light that would flash on and off and it alternated between white and red. Now I didn't feel anything particularly ominous when I was witnessing this light, but it essentially appeared as this flashing orb of light and you can see it a little bit on the video. At one point I moved a lot further down the rail bed to see if I could get a better view. And interestingly when I did this, the light did not appear as a round orb anymore. It appeared as a softer diffused flash of light, although I was not able to get this on video. And so obviously my camera quality is terrible in the dark, but I'm glad I was able to capture something and this place really piqued my interest. At some point in May of next year, I'm going to come to this spot again with a group of people from Saskatoon and we're going to bring a drone camera as well as better quality cameras in general. We're going to stay out there a lot longer and move further down the rail line to see what happens. So in the early 2000s, two grade 12 students at Churchill High School in Larange, Saskatchewan famously claimed to have debunked the ghost lights in an experiment that they conducted for a science fair. They claimed that the St. Louis ghost lights were caused by a diffraction of distant vehicle lights and at times similar explanations have been given for other ghost lights around the world. However, this has been heavily refuted by many people. People in St. Louis say that the lights have been spotted long before cars were common in this area and others say that the light behaves in a way that just could not be caused by car headlights. And as I mentioned, people have reported a very ominous feeling at this location and there have been many reports of people experiencing significant vehicle troubles at this spot, which suggests that something else might be going on. The St. Louis light has parallels to other atmospheric ghost lights seen around the world, such as the Longdendale lights in Northern England and the famous Marfa lights in Texas. You could also say it's similar to the Will of the Wisp in European folklore. And there are many other locations around the world where people have reported seeing similar things. One of the most popular scientific explanations for these lights is that they are produced from the natural combustion of certain flammable gases that leak from the ground and then ignite when exposed to oxygen. And there's definitely a debate around the cause of these lights. But I want to do more videos on this topic down the road. There are some places in Canada that experience similar things and they're not as well known. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.